aggregation. Hey, I'm Karen. I created this video for Georgia College and State University on aggregation. In this video, we'll learn what aggregation is, look at a real-world example of aggregation, we'll learn how to express aggregation in UML diagrams, look at how to code your own aggregate classes, we'll also learn how to avoid using null references in aggregation and some security glitches that you can encounter while using aggregation. What is aggregation? Aggregation occurs when an instance of a class is a field in another class. An example of aggregation is that actor is an instance of a class seen as a field inside of the movie class. Here's a UML diagram for our actor class. We have the variables string last name, string first name, and int age. We have an actor constructor that accepts a string last name, string first name, and int age, and we have a second actor constructor that accepts an actor object. We also have a set method that accepts a last name, first name, and int and initializes those variables, and we have a toString method that returns a string. Here we have the code for our actor class. We declare our private variables, private string last name, private string first name, and private int age. Next, we have our actor constructor, which accepts two string arguments and one integer argument. We initialize our last name, first name, and age arguments accordingly. Next, we have our second actor constructor, which acts as our copy constructor. Say public actor, and we pass an actor object to as an argument. We use this object to to initialize last name, first name, and age by calling object to dot last name, object to dot first name, and object to dot age. Next, we have our set method that can be used to define or redefine the variables anytime in your code. They also accept two string arguments and an integer argument and use these arguments to reinitialize the last name, first name, and age variables. Next, we have our two string method which returns a string. In our two string method, I said string str equals last name plus last name. And on a separate line, first name plus first name. On another separate line, age plus age. Then I simply return the string. We'll compile our actor code. And that's it for the actor class. Here we have the UML diagram for our movie class. We have a string title and an actor object actor. We have a movie constructor which accepts a string title as an argument and an actor object actor as an argument. We have a get title method which returns a string and we have a get actor method which returns an actor. We also have a two string method which returns a string with the information of the movie class. Notice how the highlighted actor objects are acting as fields inside the movie class. Here's the code for our movie class. We have our public class movie. We have the two private variables, string title and actor, actor. Next, we have our movie constructor, which accepts a string name and an actor, act. We use the name and act to set title and actor in the movie class. We do this by saying title equals name and by saying actor equals new actor, act. Notice here that instead of simply setting actor equal to act, we actually use the actor class's copy constructor. Next, we have our get title method that simply returns a string, the title of the movie. We next have our get actor method which returns an actor object. And when we return an actor object, we say return new actor and pass actor to the copy constructor. The last method that we have is our two string method which returns a string. I declared string str and set it equal to movie title plus title and on a separate line actor information and then plus actor. I then returned str. We'll simply compile the code and that's it for our movie class. Here we show how to express aggregation in UML diagrams. We have the UML diagrams for our movie and our actor classes connected by a line and a diamond. 
The diamond is closest to the class that is aggregate, or the class that holds the instance of the other class. You need to make sure that your aggregate classes are secure. To do so, perform deep copies when creating field objects. This means that when you copy an aggregate object, it is important that you also make copies of the objects that it references. Use a copy constructor in your class. In our example, we have our copy constructor actor, which initializes act2 with the contents of act1. Also, make sure that you return copies of the field objects, not the originals. When a method in the aggregate class returns a reference to a field object, make sure it's returning the copy of that field object. Return a new object by creating a copy in your return statement. For example, return new actor act1. Avoid using null references in your aggregate classes. A variable in an instance field is initialized to null by default. The variable does not reference any object. A null variable cannot be used to call a method or perform an operation. If you try, the program will terminate. How to avoid using null references? One way is to use if statements in the getLength method to determine if any fields are set to null. Here's an example. We have our getLength code where we initialize an int variable to zero. We check to see if the, a given variable is equal to null. If it's not equal to null, we get the length of that variable and add it to the len variable we declared. If it is null, then we simply return len, which would be zero. Another way to avoid using null references is to write a noArg constructor that assigns values to the reference fields. Here we have our public full name constructor, which assigns values to first name and last name variables. I hope this video helped you become more familiar with aggregate classes. Good luck!